Welcome, Mom and Dad, to Puppet History. Today, we're taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the not-all-that-heavy-yet book we call History, while you two ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Master. I'm your beloved son, the Professor. Thank you. I am already confused, but I love the energy. You sound real excited. Mom, are you ready? Yes, baby. Dad, are you ready? Oh, never. Okay. Then let's crack in! Okay, now, to begin, are either of you dinosaurs? Oh, sure! <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're both dinosaurs, isn't that fun? Well, uh, this is perfect because today's topic is dinosaurs, so I'm expecting a perfect score on the trivia questions. Well, I am. I'm kind of dumb, but your mother is very smart. No, you're the smart one. I'm you just the one so? that yells at you. Well, that's fine. I love you. You keep me in check. Yeah, so I'm going, baby. sorry. I love, okay, great. Oh, oh, a quick note before we start. This is very confusing. As we all know, we three are currently in the Cretaceous period. Are you guys aware of that? Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous. The, the, the crouton period. Right, exactly. Now, that's about 65 million years before when the old me used to live. Since everything I know is from that frame of reference, that's what I'm going to use. So when I say something happened 100 million years ago, it was actually 35 million years ago for you dinosaurs. But 100 million years for any human being who has the technology to somehow view this. Does that make sense? No, son, my mind is. What is years? I am numb. Oh, right. You guys don't know about years. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about them. Just keep on living your lives. Before we talk about dinosaurs, let's talk about before dinosaurs. The Permian period. Did you guys know that stuff came before you? No. Okay, whoa, wow, this is very exciting. Well, the Permian period lasted from about 299 million years ago until about 252 million years ago. A period of almost 50 million years that I'm going to sum up in a couple of minutes. I don't know that much of anything. There's no amount of number that I know that matches that. Nothing. What is our son saying? I'll help you understand a year. Sure. Oh, so you know that big bright ball in the sky? Mm. Oh. Big O! Yeah, yeah Big O! That's what your mother and I call Big O! Yeah, we love Big O! Fantastic. Hey, I got burned by Big O once! Oh, wow. yeah. Went out there and fell asleep next to my rock! Oh, no! <laughs> Can you believe it? So you know how Big O wakes up in the morning and mm -hmm. goes to sleep at night? Every mm -hmm. morning! So imagine Big O doing that 365 times! Hey, that's a lot of Big O! Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. 365 Big O's, that's about a year! God, you're oh, smart! My baby's oh, so get out smart. of here! Stop it! All right, well, I'm about to blow your minds. The Permian period lasted for 50 million years. Oh, that's a lot of big O's. That's a lot of big O's. During this time, all of the land was grouped together on one part of the earth, and all the water was the rest of the earth. The land part was known as Pangaea. Everything sinks in water. I threw my rock into the water one time. If you down. talk about that rock one more time, baby, I'm gonna oh, eat your toe. All right, that's okay. okay. We don't have to talk about the rock anymore. Oh, our first question. What was the name of the water part of Earth? Water. <laughs> well, A, Pansia, B, Panthalassa, or C, Aquapana. Aquapana. That's a fun one. Your mother and I are gonna go with Aquapana. Oh, a united front. You guys really are a team. We always have been. You know what? You both got it wrong, but since I love you, I'm gonna give a point to you both. <laughs> so, it was actually called Panthalassa. Ooh. Panthalassa. Panthalassa. Oh, that's fancy. Now, Panthalassa extended from the North Pole to the South Pole and was twice as wide as the Pacific Ocean at the equator. One part of Panthalassa, the Tethys Sea, cut into Pangaea on its eastern side, meaning Pangaea was essentially one giant sea-shaped landmass. Pangaea was very dry, and the difference between the seasons was drastic, partially because there weren't any big lakes or rivers to dampen the temperature swings. Hey son, you're just saying things again. I don't yeah. know, I'm sorry. Words are... You're just saying words. Yeah. Word soup is what that was. You know what this word soup is, though? It's history. <laughs> That's your whole thing. You're learning about the way that the world was before you were here. Now, because of this, some mountains began to form. But all in all, there wasn't a ton going on. Sure, there were creatures crawling about, but none of us would recognize them, mostly because almost all of them would go extinct. The end of the Permian period marked the single largest mass extinction in Earth's recorded history, which, spoiler alert, was not the last. We should have a uh, pterodactyl tonight to eat. What were you saying, yeah. son? 
You're a pterodactyl, are you? I know, we're cannibals, it's fine. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, we like to eat each other. I'm sorry, I lost track, got a little hungry. What were you saying there? Almost all of the life during the Permian period went extinct and died. A lot of death. I'm gonna look, I'm just telling you what happened, okay? But that ain't us, right? Like, we ain't gonna die. <laughs> are we gonna have this love forever, baby? Yeah, baby. Forever. forever. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. By some estimates, less than 10% of Permian species survived the global warming caused purge. Up to 95% of marine invertebrates, 75% of amphibians, and 80% of reptiles would never be seen again. Imagine going to a zoo, then having four fifths of those animals be dead forever. That's a shitty zoo. You know, it's funny, I used to date an invertebrate before your father. Is that don't so? Bring him up. All right, all right. I don't like it. He was flexible. He was flexible. I had a little I moment know. with the just fold him like origami. Oh, I would fold him up too. I hated him though. Wait, did you guys do stuff together? Oh, with dinosaurs him? act different. Uh, we were in an open polyamorous relationship, but we kicked him out. Your mother and I are very progressive. Our parents weren't like that. Well, moving along, the Permian period was followed by the Triassic period, which lasted from about 250 million years to 200 million years ago. Now, at this point, Pangaea was 25% of the planet, with Panthalassa making up the other. 75%. In general, the Triassic period was pretty chill. The tectonic plates were on cruise control, and the climate around the world was more mild than it will be in the 21st century. It was also pretty much the same everywhere. There weren't any polar ice caps, and the temperature at the North Pole wasn't all that different at the equator. With everywhere on the one continent looking and feeling more or less the same, there really wasn't a wide range of habitats, which meant a lot less biodiversity. That makes sense, right? We don't need penguins and roadrunners if there's only one type of place to live. Also, neither penguins nor roadrunners would appear for millions of years. Hey son, I got a question for I, you. I think I know what it is, go ahead. No, it's not, yeah, I was gonna ask you, you ever been cold before? Uh, One night I got so cold. Oh, I, I, I guess you guys don't do a lot, right? You... Well, no, we get cold. We get cold. <laughs> we look at rocks. Okay. We live a full life. Yeah, getting cold is a great hobby. Oh, I love it. Now, what the Triassic period did have, however, were reptiles, which started to increase in number and species. After millions of years of subtly changing, some animals started making appearances that humans would recognize turtles, some lizards, crocodilians, all of these would at least be recognizable to my future human friends. Mm, change is good. I like change it. Is What's good? a human? So, you see me? Yeah. Okay, now imagine me, but a lot bigger and shaved. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so move along. With birds still waiting in the wings, the sky was rife with freaky prehistoric flappers. Now the Triassic equivalent of the Wright brothers was the Icarosaurus. He was like a little tiny reptilian flying squirrel. The Icarosaurus had skin that stretched between its extended ribs, allowing it to glide. Evolution was pushing the bounds of what it could accomplish with reptiles when it stumbled upon a hit. Dinosaurs! Oh, that's us! That's us. Like you it. guys! Yeah, yeah. Now these Triassic dinosaurs were small, bipedal, and quick, and would be relatively unfamiliar to those of us who have seen dinosaurs in movies or at the breakfast table in the morning because they're your mom and dad. Movies. Movies are like life, but not. God, those are hard to explain. Okay. Oh, how about this? When it storms, you know the flashes? Yeah, okay, what about it? Yeah. Now imagine that, but if it told a story, like if the lightning uh, fell in love. Like you and me, babe. Yeah, okay. Late in the Triassic period, that one big piece of land that all those reptiles lived on started to split apart, separating Africa from the Americas. Now plate tectonics isn't the most dynamic of processes, but this late Triassic shift was kind of a big deal. Question, why? A, it was caused by volcanoes. B, it also reversed the magnetic poles. Or C, only one of the new continents had any plants on it. I'm gonna go with the, 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 the magnetic poles. I'm gonna say the plants one. Oh, you guys aren't. Well, because I know what plants are, so that's the, you know, I just took the yeah. one word and ran with it. Okay, well now I'm actually gonna tell you guys the answer via the magic of theater. This is actually kind of gonna be like a little movie. Lightning! Woo! Like lightning, yes, exactly. All right. All right, here, just give me a second. Honey, I'm home. Oh, hey babe, how's work? 
It was fine. I floated around, courtesy of the skin between my ribs. Nothing too interesting. Uh, hey, did you see the neighbors are moving? Very slowly, as their land drifts away from our land, I did notice that, yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with... Honey, I don't want to get into this again. Babe, you can't ignore this anymore. Fine! Yes, there are a billion volcanoes and they're all erupting and it's probably what's making the neighbors move. Are you happy? And? And the climate appears to be changing again and as a result, a ton of species are going to go extinct. What do you want me to do about it? Can you just admit that I was right? I'd rather die! Oh, that was very powerful, son. Yeah, they need a little blue baby like us. Unfortunately, points for no one, it was volcanoes. The most widely accepted theory for why Pangaea began to break apart is intense volcanic activity. Now, this caused more climate change, which led to yet another mass extinction event. Same way the Permian period ended. Now, if you're looking for a takeaway today, how about that climate change sure does seem to lead to mass extinction events pretty often, just in case anyone in the future is facing a climate apocalypse or anything. Well, that probably never happens in nah. the future. Huh. Right in the future, you guys probably got it all figured out. Yeah, no climate change in the future. Oh. <laughs> Y'all got the ears and stuff and the fireballs. Yeah, I like that. Replacing the Triassic was the Jurassic period, which lasted another 55-ish million years from around 200 million years ago to 145 million years ago. Now, once again, Earth found it had a lot of vacancies for the position of animals, meaning evolution got back to the drawing board. With different land masses and a diversifying climate, new animals started popping up wherever they could. Wooded and forest habitats provided a place for small mammals to grow, while those trees provided a place for gliding lizards to be outdone by the first real birds. Oh, I like the sound of that. New animals. I got a question yeah. for you. Yeah, sure. Is there an animal that has wings, but it's got a big mountain as a head? A big mountain I ain't, as a head. I ain't done yet, though. And it has okay. uh, the bottom of the body. It's a fish, right? So it's okay. uh, flapping around up there, Ooh. and it's dropping rocks. Okay, it's dropping rocks. Bottoms of fish. Wait, you said new animals. New animals. Yeah. Now, let's see. This is also when most of the sea life humans would recognize started swimming about. A once unrecognizable ocean was now a veritable seafood chowder with mollusks, sea urchins, starfish, crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. Now, after the Jurassic period, we as a planet stepped confidently and boldly into the Cretaceous period which went from around 145 million years ago to 66 million years ago, or I guess bringing the timeline back to us little dinosaurs. It's now! I can't keep up with the timeline. I know, it's very confusing. Are there ever any movies in the future with confusing timelines like this? Yeah, there's one called Tenet and it kicks ass. Tenet, Ooh, yeah. Tenet. Is it a little overrated? Me personally, I don't think so. Oh, interesting. I don't think so either, necessarily. Sounds like you do. Boys, no. boys, no. It just sounds like it makes some specific choices. Boys, interesting. boys. Interesting. You know, you I'm have just a problem saying. with interesting choices? Well, how's the audio? Whoa. It's a little overblown. A little confusing. The mix places. is a little tough. Make you turn on the subtitles. I didn't know what they were saying when they were on the foils. That's, you're not proving any points there, Mr. Director. The Cretaceous period began with basically two big continents, Laurasia and Gondwana, with the Tethys Sea in between. Now, however, at the tail end of the period, most of the continents are separated, with two exceptions. Oh! What are those exceptions? To get this right, you'll have to know a bit about what the Earth looks like 66 million years into the future. So, good luck. Okay, so son, we don't have any context, you understand? We don't know the names. This might be a bad question. Pan though remember the water? Yeah, Pantalussi. Pantalassa. You know what? I'll give you both a point anyway. Woo! -hoo! Yeah! I love it. Well, you're not gonna understand any of this, but right now, the land that will eventually be known as India is an island. While the land down under, Australia, is even down underer. Basically a tumor off of Antarctica. Oh, tumors, that sounds like fun. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> they're really not, but oh. um, I guess that's fun to say. Tumor. T we should name a next kid tumor. Now, uh, one other fact worth mentioning, there's only about 64% as much land as there will be in the 21st century, as the oceans are someplace between 660 and 820 feet higher than they will be. That means that, yes, the Titanic won't have as far to sink. Silver linings. Now, while right now dinos are, of course, dominating, that doesn't mean there aren't other animals around worth mentioning. 
There are uh, rodents, cats, cows, kangaroos, koalas, and even some primates. Hilariously, however, most of them are small, like very small, smaller than rabbits. Now imagine a tiny little cow wandering about. I mean, trust me, mom and dad, if you knew a cow like I know a cow, you would be laughing. Did I already ask him about the animal with the mountain for the head? <laughs> The fish bottom and the wings? Did I ask you that? You son? did ask me about that. Is this something you've seen in a dream? Yes. Your father's a psychic. Is he? He sees the future. I'm not sure that you do see the future. Oh, yeah? Well, I thought you liked it. I say in the future, your mother and I love you. Oh! oh huh? What do you do? Well, I was wrong. Something for you. Oh, you getting guys. Sorry, go on. Um, where do things go after that? Well, at the end of the Cretaceous period, uh... And? Something happens, but yeah, hey, since we haven't gotten there yet, I think that concludes our history lesson. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 son, are you lying to your parents? No, he would he's never hiding lie. something. No, oh, he looks a little nervous, but it's probably yeah. just because he's performing. Okay, well, I don't know exactly when we are in the Cretaceous, but I assume the doom and gloom is still a ways off, so I guess I can probably clue you into all this stuff, knowing that uh, we'll all be bones before this all goes down. Uh, okay, um, how do I... Okay, welcome, Mom and Dad, to Puppet Future! Oh! Ooh. Today we're taking a look at the future while you two lovingly compete for the coveted title of Future Master. I'm still your beloved son, the Professor. Oh, I'm not competitive. Can your mother just be Future Master? Yeah. Yeah, this is a healthy relationship. Oh, that's what I say. We do a lot of communication. Yeah, that that's, the, that's the key. Now, to begin, do you ever look up at the night sky and see a shooting star? No, but one time your mother ate a moth. Yeah. Okay. Well, our topic going forward are those flashes of light in the sky, those brief burning glimmers that suddenly interrupt the ruthless mathematical regularity of the night sky, specifically one particular flash of light that's set to interrupt quite a bit around here. We're talking about our extinction event. Yeah, Big O does something spooky? No, Big O's gonna hang out where he is. Okay, uh, we love Big O. Well, speaking of that, so space, remember I told you about the void? Yes, sure. the void okay. of death and darkness. Exactly right. Space is one of many frontiers, famous for its absence of things. It's almost entirely nothingness, not even air. Now, the exceptions to that nothingness include planets, like Earth, moons, stars, as well as comets and asteroids. Now, those last two are rocks or balls of ice oh, just oh. cruising through space. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Bring it on! Oh, man. well... I love rocks. You know that about I know, me. And I, I love, love ice. Rocks. Hey, so how soon can this happen? Because I want to see a big rock come oh, towards me. Well, yeah, hopefully I not too nice. soon. I think oh. we're clear of it, honestly. I don't know if you'd like this rock. Now, every once in a while, those rocks will get sucked into Earth's gravity, burning up in the atmosphere, forming those little flashes of light called meteors. Usually, the meteors burn up into nothingness before reaching the ground. But if they're the size of a Granny Smith apple or so, they'll survive the trip through the atmosphere and earn the right to give Earth a little smooth. Oh, here's a question. Right now, in dino time, there's an object, probably far off in space, aiming to plant a big old wet one right on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. How big is that object? A, 600 feet across. B, six miles across. Or C, 600 miles across. I'm gonna go with B. Son, we don't know anything. I don't think you guys understand the empirical measuring system, so I'm just gonna change the answers to A, pretty big, B, even bigger, or C, way too big. Oh, I'll go with pretty big. I'll go with way too big. Okay, well, I'm not gonna give you points for either of those, because you're both wrong. It's somewhere in the middle. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that is nice. I mean, thank goodness it isn't C, as the comet we do have to deal with is gonna be plenty big. So it's about six miles across. If one of those was coming towards where you are now, right, the big rock? Yeah. What would you do? I don't think there's much you could do. Honestly. Your mother and I would try to scream at it, probably. Yeah. That makes sense. Hey, get out of here. That rock That's would not be bad, gone. Honestly, I, yeah. I don't think it would be gone, but uh, sure, well. like I said, six miles big, and it's heading for spring break in Cancun, somewhere between 45,000 and 67,000 miles per hour. This thing's, as we say in the future, hauling ass. We may as well go through what would happen. Once the comet hits the Earth's atmosphere, it's going to compress the air in its path, 
creating what will be the loudest sonic boom in history, likely rupturing eardrums around the world. Within seconds, this bad mamma jamma will smash into the ground. One second after that, it will have dug 25 miles into the earth, forming a crater around 100 miles wide, reducing itself and the rock around it to mere vapor. As Walter Alvarez will someday write in his book, T-Rex and the Crater of Doom, quote, the concept of rocks instantaneously boiling away to vapor conveys a gut feeling for the extraordinary and violent conditions during an impact. Oh, son, that's not a big deal. Yeah. You've been told fairy tales. Don't oh, worry about it. Literally. Yeah. And one time I jumped on a rock and it cracked. It cracked, fell Whoa. right on the ground. Guess what happened? None of that nonsense no, you no. just said. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, so don't worry about it. Don't worry well, about it, baby. This are, again, this is a pretty big rock. Now, at that point, things are going to get pretty bad pretty quickly. Now, together, I want you to come up with one final meaningful thing to say before shit hits the fan. Uh, please make it quick, though. Let's say the meteorite hits right when you begin to talk. So if you had final words, what would they be? I miss my- Time's up! Sorry. Well, that's fine. You didn't get to finish. But if it makes you feel any better, there aren't going to be many listeners soon. Because when that comet hits, it's going to release a force equivalent to a billion nuclear bombs. If you or any plant or animal you know is within 600 miles of the impact, we'll follow you away under Lucky. You'll be easy to file, too, as your entire physical form will be annihilated more or less instantly. I'm going to be frank with you. I don't think we understand the future. No, <laughs> I don't think you do either, but that's okay. Now, a shockwave will essentially liquefy what had seconds ago been solid land. The ground will shake so violently that bones will break and necks will snap. As Stephen L. Broussat will write in The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, a hilarious title given this poll quote, quote, small dinosaurs and the little mammals and lizards were catapulted upwards, then splattered onto trees and rocks when they landed. Free food! Free splats! Now, speaking of rocks, Dad, you're gonna love this. I already do. Okay. Those rocks will be hurled up into the sky as well. Some out even past our atmosphere. This is called ejecta. Now, that wouldn't be so big of a deal, except for that old adage about what goes up. What had been dumb old rocks will essentially be turned into glowing hot bullets as they rain back down, shredding anything not under shelter for the next hour. Oh. Ooh. A rock party. Yeah, that sounds like a rock party. It does sound Ooh. nice. They will be very hot, though, is uh... Oh, we don't like heat. Okay, so You're let's... You're scaring your mother. All right, so scaring sorry, don't, don't worry, anywhere. we're going to be licking up splats. It's yeah, gonna be okay. Fun. Okay, so let's say you hang out in a cave for an hour. You're still not getting the severity of an extinction-level event, unfortunately, because that raining ejecta will transfer much of its heat into the atmosphere, essentially turning the air into uh, an oven. As Stephen Broussat will write, the surviving animals were now roasting, their skin and bones cooking at temperatures that instantaneously produce third-degree burns. And those are just the things with skin. Entire forests will combust and wildfires will rage across the planet, filling the superheated atmosphere with roiling clouds of black smoke. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand the gravity of the situation. Free food, though. Yeah, I understand. Like they but... cooked, yeah. and we never had cooked food. Listen, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I don't want to be involved in this. I'm so glad we get to die of natural causes. I know. I just can't wait to be a pile of bones with you. Oh. I just want to be an old pile of bones with you. It would be, I'd love to be a pile of bones with you guys, too. The three of us just pilot it. Yeah, and then we turn into dust. One day, yeah. Pop quiz! All the forests are on fire. What's our only hope of putting them out? A. Volunteer firemen Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. <laughs> that's a joke about them living in dinosaur times. They're funny guys. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. We like that you left, son. Yeah, yeah. don't worry. About that's it. all we want. This is your happy yeah. baby. One for me. <laughs> yeah. B. Rain or C. A tsunami. I want to say tsunami. I'm going to say rain because I think it's a trick question. Well, let's find out again via the magic of theater. You guys are going to oh love this. One. Oh, well, I got bad news. Oh, what could be bad news after a giant comet hit the planet and now it's like a bajillion degrees out? Oh, well, the forests are on fire. Oh, darn it, just what we need. Which forest? All of them. Oh, double darn it. What are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know. All of a sudden, the air is really starting to mess up the air. If it gets really bad, I'm not sure how much light's gonna get through. Oh, wait, I think I felt a drop. Rain! 
Rain! Hallelujah! We're safe! Ouch! Ooh! Life saving rain! Ouch! Ow! Yo! Does this rain hurt? Oh, triple darn it! It does! It's almost like acid! Acid rain! Oh, are you serious? Well, now what will put out the fire? Oh, hey, look! Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Oh, what do you think of that one, guys? I gotta say, I did not like that story. Okay, I'd award points, but there really isn't a good answer here. Plus, we're sort of past that. You, you can't take points with you after all, but surprise, surprise, things wouldn't be looking good. The heat in the atmosphere from the falling ejecta will cause the nitrogen in our air to form nitrous oxide, which will fall to Earth as acid rain, destroying plants, animals, and minerals alike. Really, the only hope of extinguishing any fires will be hoping they get doused by the tsunamis cruising around the planet at twice the height of the Empire State Building, a famous skyscraper set to be built millions of years from now. Like a mountain, essentially. Oh. oh. Son, what's the big deal about acid? Yeah. Uh, it burns. It, it burns. Oh. Uh, it's like water, but it burns you. No acid for us. So, things are gonna be pretty bad for a few days, but after that, well, uh, things are still gonna be really, really bad. Dust, soot, and smoke will hang in the atmosphere anywhere from months to years, and we're not talking like a cloudy day. Back to writer Walter Alvarez, quote, the land became so dark that you could not have seen your hand in front of your face, and this darkness and the accompanying cold probably lasted for a few months. Food is tough to find when you can't see it, and soon it'll be even harder to find because it doesn't exist. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No food? Does this thing cover up big ol'? Uh... Yeah. Wait, is it gonna be cold? It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be really cold for a while. Ooh. You know, I can stop telling this story. No, 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 it's okay. son, it's, it's, okay. it's important okay. to you, so it's important yeah, to us. Yeah, we, we like love it. you. We're sorry, listen, we're gonna change our attitudes, okay? Yes. We're gonna okay. come up from this and finish your mm -hmm. story. I'm okay, sorry. that's Because we know it doesn't affect us. Yeah, it doesn't, right. it doesn't affect us I really, here in Mexico. I honestly think we'll be fine. So, without sunlight, plants can't grow. Without plants, Herbivores will starve. Without herbivores, all the other ivores are going to go the way of the dinosaur. Oh, sorry, that's uh, an expression from the future. That just means happy. Yeah, the way of the, way of the dinosaur, dinosaur, like happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, let's say you're calling me a liar, which I know you guys never would. No, never. never. Let's say you miraculously make it through this nuclear winter. Once the dust settles, things still aren't going to turn around right away. With all those forests having burnt up, not to mention all the carbon dioxide suddenly thrust into the atmosphere from the vaporized limestone of the actual impact, there will be so much CO2 that the greenhouse effect will lead to sweltering temperatures for thousands of years. I might have to go out after this and pick After some your stuff story, up. we'll go bug hunting. Yeah. yeah you, you know, because you guys only eat spiders. I eat everything else. She eats everything else. How many more bugs do you think you can stop? Oh, stash we can easily get 14, 15. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll even 20 if we crack a lot. Oh, I never thought about yeah. that. We can get 30 bugs easy. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll be fine then. Now, the creatures that do manage to survive all of this, well, they'll rightfully inherit the planet. It's gonna be a long slog, and the Earth they're getting out of the deal will have seen better days, but it'll be theirs to populate and evolve upon, eventually getting to the point where rich D-bags compete to build rockets and escape this place altogether. Well, that concludes our future lesson. This is usually when we have a musical guest come in and sing a funny little song about the lesson, but uh, since there really isn't anyone to do that, I'll just get to telling the, um, oh, no, mom, what's wrong? S story just gave me the creeps. Yeah, sure, it's a ways off everything that you just talked about. Oh, I mean, it's gotta be. Uh, most likely, the, the Cretaceous period lasts for millions and millions of years. The odds of us existing during the precise moment that this whole calamity unfolds are slim uh, to- uh -huh. What is it? <laughs> you ever seen that big old shiny star up in the sky right there? Oh no. What is it, son? I think this is it. I, I don't know how, but I, I, I think it's about to happen. Oh no. Oh, but I, I just met you guys. We were having so much fun, I, I can't... I squandered it all! I spent all my time thinking about the past and the future instead of just enjoying what's in front of me, and now it's too late! What, what are we gonna do? Hey, 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 son, son. It's all right, okay? You can't stop what's coming. But it, it, this isn't fair. What isn't fair is that I spent so much of my dumb dinosaur life not having a wonderful little blue son. Yeah, but now we got you. And you got us. And that's enough for me. Yeah, sure, our time together was brief, but that is in the past. And we're all gonna be burnt to a crisp. That's in the future. So, 
What have we got right now? We've got each other. We've got each other. So we'll go sit down by my favorite rock and we'll watch the world end together. As a cute little family, and maybe one day they'll find our sexy ass bones all hugging on each other. You know what? I, I like that. All right, family, showtime. I've been living in the past, had a hunch it wouldn't last. Now I'm just trying to stay calm. And if this really is the end, I'm sure glad I made some friends. My funny dad and horny mom. A lonely life among the stars. My destination veiled and far away. But I knew one day we'd find each other. Then in the dark, a glint, a spark, the greens and blues. Be still, my heart. And once I hit, that's it. I'm here forever. It's been a long and winding trip. And who'd have thought it'd come to this? The end of days, a cosmic kiss. Hold your breath and hold on tight. Hunker down, try not to cry. Tell the critters that you love, that you love them. That's enough, cause there's no stopping what's to come. Some shit's just etched into the stars, calamities you cannot run. And when sweet earth we finally meet, the sky will burn and boil the sea as its mountains rend, it's you and me. Here at the end of history. Hello there. Nice to meet you. I'm a, a rock and uh, huh? well, something interesting about myself. Oh, uh, I go this way. Yeah. And that's really all I've ever done. But uh, it looks like you're in my way. So there, I guess there's nothing I can do about that, right? Uh, I guess this is it for me. Huh. Stopping is something I've never really uh, done thought about it a lot, but if I'm being honest, I'm a little sp spooked about it. <laughs> Why am I lying? Uh, I'm terrified, okay, but I... <sighs> I gotta say, if I'm gonna stop, this looks like a a really wonderful place to do it. I mean, holy moly. Anyway, sorry. Uh, thanks for giving me a rest and I hope I'm not too much of a nuisance around here. <laughs> what the fuck is going on up there? Come on! Get it over with! Oh, sounds like they're excited for me down there. Okay, I'm excited to meet everybody. Uh, here we go. Oh, 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 fuck this hot now! Oh shit, here he comes. Uh, beef boy, if you're out there somewhere, that would be a great time to save our asses!
I didn't save him. But you said... Uh, yeah, I mean, it should have worked, but, uh... I don't know. Anyway, nice doing business with you. What? Where am I? <gasps> Beef boy! We're prisoner! Get over here, you old son of a gun! <laughs> I'm you're, so you're, sorry. You're, you're big. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a I, nasty I, I, man. I was, I was nasty. I'm nasty. I didn't mean to do any of that. I, I, no, I, I didn't. I was a bad friend. I was too. I'm glad you're back. Huh? <laughs> Class dismissed, you little blue ball sack. Because you're going to nothing. <laughs> Who the hell was that? Long story. Oh, who are they? Oh, uh, also a long story. Well, hello there, you sexy little ape. Hey, uh, beef boy, right? You got any jelly beans? 